Bitcoin looks dead, but is it dead? The Bitcoin price has not picked up since the tragic crypto fall that started in late 2021. Reclaiming its all-time high now seems like a dream that can never come true. We have been stuck for the longest time and influencers are even thinning out. Is this the time to officially announce the death of Bitcoin? According to recent reports, crypto exchange Coinbase has announced the launch of a derivatives platform for its internal clients. The US company has been trying to increase its presence overseas as the Securities and Exchange Commission tightens regulatory conditions in the country. In that vein, the crypto trading venture launched an international arm to grow revenue as spot trading volumes decline with the crypto market. The company said in an official statement, Today, we are excited to announce that Coinbase International Exchange has received additional regulatory approval from the BMA to extend perpetual futures trading to non-US retail customers. In the coming weeks, we will begin to offer eligible customers access to regulated perpetual futures contracts on Coinbase Advance. This announcement could onboard more traders to the crypto ecosystem to benefit Bitcoin and the entire market. Even XRP is not an exception as it has been among the most popular coins in the past few months following a critical legal victory in the US. While the legal scenario in the US is still uncertain for the nation's sector, an expert believes that XRP is one of the coins that will benefit due to its victory against the SEC. If this scenario plays out, tokens with legal support will thrive, and XRP and Bitcoin seem the two likely winners in this new era. Plus, the SEC chair Gary Gensler has reiterated that Bitcoin is not a security, and this applies to XRP too. However, the problem is not about XRP, but about Bitcoin. From all indications, there seems to be a detachment of Bitcoin influencers from the cryptocurrency. Of course, we're not talking about ardent Bitcoin believers such as Michael Saylor, Robert Kiyosaki, Max Kaiser, and so on and so forth. But have you heard about what happened to BitBoy, one of Bitcoin's biggest proponents? The influential figure behind BitBoy Crypto, Ben Armstrong, has reportedly left the company, leaving the crypto community in speculation. Certain rumors have swayed several hearts and convictions because the truth remains that people love listening to influencers more than doing their own research. But it seems ridiculous to think that Bitcoin is dead because of BitBoy's dismissal. According to a screenshot shared by Bitcoin author Jason A. Williams on X, Armstrong's exit from Hit Network BJ Investment Holdings and all of its subsidiary brands, including BitBoy Crypto and around the blockchain, became effective immediately. Armstrong also confirmed the unexpected development on his personal X account, joined Ben Coin, stating, TJ Shedd and Justin Williams have attempted a coup at my company. There have been a mutiny at BitBoy Crypto and Hit Network, but it won't work. They have no leverage. This statement acknowledges the internal conflict within his company, however it suggests his confidence in retaining control despite his departure. The reasons behind Armstrong's exits remain unclear, propelling an array of conjectures. Crypto scam investigator Zach XPT questioned whether the sudden move is connected with Armstrong's recent engagement with several sketchy meme coins. While well, Armstrong has faced a slew of criticisms for advocating for risky investment trading to casual investors through affiliate links, along with the claims that he sold tokens after promoting them to viewers. Also in this whirlwind of changes, the fate of Armstrong's digital currency, Bin, came under fire. Even though some followers speculated his downfall, Armstrong responded to a query in a post and dismissed such possibilities. However, on April 20th, reports indicated that Armstrong was due to show up in court over allegations of harassment towards attorney Adam Moskowitz, who was the legal representative for a group of investors who initiated legal action against several celebrities. These celebrities endorsed the now bankrupt crypto exchange FTX, including Armstrong. Now, according to the allegations in the lawsuit, they promoted FTX without disclosing compensation. In a separate lawsuit, Moskowitz alleged that Armstrong harassed him with endless phone calls, tweets, and emails to him privately, and publicly posting insulting and threatening posts on Twitter, YouTube, and other social media. Rumors of a potential investigation involving Armstrong further stirred the pot. An expert, Adam Cotran, even shared his anticipation for Armstrong's departure with sarcasm. This departure has sent ripples throughout the crypto community. The official BitBoy X account released a formal statement stating that the Armstrong was removed due to issues with substance abuse and emotional, physical, and financial damage he has done to the employees of the hit network and the BitBoy crypto community. During a live stream, Wendy O, oh, a prominent crypto influencer and friend of Armstrong's, confirmed his departure to her subscribers. This is not FUD, this is real. I can confirm that this is real, she asserted. It turns out that the worst is not yet far from Armstrong. More recently, Ben Armstrong found himself in hot water after being arrested, following a live broadcast on YouTube. The situation unfolded when Armstrong planned to confront an individual named Carlos Diaz to recover what he claimed was his Lamborghini. The incident involved a chaotic frenzy of conspiracy theories prompting the intervention of the police. The question is how Armstrong acquired the Lamborghini in the first place. 
In a video posted on YouTube on April 11th, the crypto influencer discussed his ownership of the car while discussing the potential of Cardano as a cryptocurrency. The video had a good number of viewers. He said Cardano has spent the entire bear market in 2018. You could have bought 88 at pennies a piece, $3. Guys, that's a 300. Freaking Cardano was our best performer of the major coins in the last bull run, but they said that from the beginning. I guess what you'll keep building on Cardano and the ecosystem just keeps growing and the transactions are getting faster and faster. In the video, Armstrong also mentioned that Bitcoin's major cap holders and their control over a significant portion of the coin supply. But here's the thing. Bitcoin holders, the top 100 holders, hold 14% of the coin supply, he said. The situation was quite messy, but we can't ignore the roles that Ben Armstrong played in influencing certain cryptocurrencies. Notwithstanding, it's important to note that your investment decision should not solely depend on the juicy words of an influencer. Do your research and manage your expectations. The state of the crypto market is enough to trigger heartaches, so let's not make it worse any further. Moving forward, it has been a captivating six months in the battle between cryptocurrency companies and the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Since the initial coin offering craze in 2017, the SEC has earned the reputation of a hostile regulator in the cryptocurrency industry. The SEC has been criticized for regulating through enforcement action rather than incorporating with the industry to make a clear path. The worst case is that the cryptocurrency exchange and spot Bitcoin ETF applications have been denied or stuck in a pipeline. Crypto companies like Coinbase said that they have met with the SEC dozens of times with no resolution or clarity. Even the SEC has faced various defeats in court that further demonstrate the need for the SEC to be proactive in regulating the industry. In late August, Grayscale had a victory against the SEC in its efforts to convert its over-the-counter Grayscale Bitcoin trust into a listed spot Bitcoin ETF. The regulator had previously rejected Grayscale's application, noting that the products were not adequately designed to prevent fraudulent and manipulative acts and practices. However, the members of the House Financial Services Committee has written a letter to SEC Chair Gary Gensler urging the SEC to move forward to approve ETF applications. The House Financial Services Committee letter stated that a spot Bitcoin ETF is indistinguishable from the crypto's future ETFs, which the SEC has already approved. These wins for the cryptocurrency companies are certainly noteworthy, but do not resolve the issues completely. The SEC continues to have oversight of the nation's cryptocurrency market, and it may take congressional action to resolve it. A Bitcoin ETF would allow investors a much easier way to put money into the cryptocurrency market without actually having to custody Bitcoin, as ETFs are designed to be simple to trade in and out through brokerage accounts. People have shown interest in this product. Companies have also applied to offer a spot Bitcoin ETF. Many in the industry have noted that having more transparency and disclosures from cryptocurrency projects would be a way to help maintain the SEC's role without overstepping. If people can have more disclosures for cryptocurrency projects, it would proactively protect consumers and ensure that bad actors are caught sooner, without the need for delayed and costly enforcement actions. This of course does not mean that the SEC is no longer needed, but certain regulations need to be modified. We are still anticipating the Bitcoin halving event in 2024, so Bitcoin's dev verdict sounds a little bit like fiction. But that's going to do it for today's video. Make sure you click on the subscribe notification buttons, and we'll see you in the next video.